video we are going to discuss about Sylvia Plath and one of her well known poems Lady Lazarus. Sylvia Plath as you already must be knowing was an American poet, short story writer and novelist who is best known for her confessional mode of poetry which is a style of poetry that originated in the United States during the 1950s. She was a victim of clinical depression and it even led to her suicide. Confessional poetry is a poetry of the eye, a sort of intensely personal poetry that has for its subject the individual experience, the psyche of a particular being, the troubles and the trauma that sicken them. The term was coined by M. L. Rosenthal while reviewing Robert Lowell's Life Studies. Robert Lowell, W. D. Snodgrass, Sylvia Plath, and even Anne Sexton or Allen Ginsberg are some of the writers that are, you know, usually associated with this mode of writing. In today's times, it might be difficult to find anything nearly as revolutionary in confessional poetry as back in the day, but before the 1950s, modernism dominated the scene, with its emphasis on impersonality and objectivity, and uh, it was a bold move to write such self-revelatory uh, verses in those times. So, confessional poetry created uh, works around the usual taboo subjects such as mental illness, familial drama, suicide and sexuality, all of which have come to be widely explored, discussed and have drastically changed in terms of people's attitudes towards them since then. Sylvia Plath is most representative poet of this school as her poetry is both dense, closed in and full of vigorous intensity. Her poems Daddy and Lady Lazarus have become iconic examples of her art where she actively and unashamedly admits various aspects of her personal life including the death of her father and her own suicidal thoughts and attempts. So Sylvia Plath's poetry is actually autobiographical and showcases her mental anguish, her problematic marital relationship with another popular poet Ted Hughes and her depressing and morbid interest in the idea of death itself. Lady Lazarus is a dramatic monologue which has depths of despair but also a confident clarity and a matter-of-fact acceptance to it, which makes it a very unique uh, dealing into the idea of death. It was published two years after her death by her, uh, the publishers and has obvious autobiographical undertones that make it riveting. It opens with a suicidal attempt by a lady who has tried it previously too but remained unsuccessful. Before we move any further, let's discuss the title in brief. So what is with the title? Who is Lazarus? And why is the speaker in the poem referred to as Lady Lazarus? Saint Lazarus or Lazarus of Bethany is a biblical figure in, and is one of the prime examples of the miracles of Jesus in the Gospel of John. Jesus loved Lazarus and when he died of illness, Jesus wept and by the time he arrived at Bethany, Lazarus had been placed in the grave for four days. But Jesus performed a miracle and brought him back to life. In popular culture and modern times, the name Lazarus is often identified with someone who has been restored to life or who escapes death. This poem alludes to the biblical figure. The only difference between uh, the protagonist and uh, the biblical Lazarus is that he is a male while Lady Lazarus is a female, a woman who hasn't actually died physically but has convinced herself that her soul, mind and everything deep within her is dead and only her physical body is a hurdle she needs to give up in order to die completely. But somehow her attempts at suicide are foiled by one thing or the other and she is saved by the doctors and those who attend to her which is frustrating for her. She says that at the beginning of the poem that she has done it just again. She has attempted suicide and failed again. 
she compares herself to the victims of the holocaust and death would be actually a relief to her but she seems to be um, the proverbial cat with the nine lives and somehow she keeps on escaping death and coming back to life so the poem begins i have done it again one year in every 10 i manage it and then there is a big pause a big dash in which she thinks about the failed suicidal attempt a sort of walking miracle my skin bright as a nazi lamp shade my right foot a paper weight my face a featureless fine jeweled linen peel off the napkin oh my enemy do i terrify and then there is again a big pause this time in order to let the enemy think about whatever is happening so when the poem begins the speaker says that she has done it again and she manages to do this once in every 10 years but what is this it that uh, she is talking of she does not just tell right now now whatever this it is it makes her a walking miracle so here we obviously sense parallels to the biblical story but let's read further now she begins to compare her physical bodily attributes to images from the holocaust the nazi lampshade like skin her foot like a paperweight her featureless face like a jew linen basically she is comparing herself to the jewish victims of the holocaust now uh, this is a reference to the rumors that the nazis used the dead bodies of the murdered jews who were murdered in the most abominable of ways by the way to produce objects such as lampshades paperweights etc so this is a pretty revolting image but it is just the beginning if the disgust of the last few nights was not enough you have another pretty graphic description in which she asks her enemies to peel off her skin and even mocks them by asking if that thought terrifies them it might also be that she is addressing the audience or even an enemy that is not present in the scene which is a poetic figure of speech commonly termed as apostrophe now when her face is removed from the picture she goes into grotesque images of the eye pits the nose the full set of teeth revealing a skeleton as it were and also affirms that in a day the sour breath will be lost and all will be well when she actually physically dies she then goes further stating that soon her body will decompose the grave will eat up her flesh or her body shall mingle with the soil she claims that she is a young smiling woman of 30 and knows it well how to dis- uh, deceive the world and happens to have nine lives and hence nine chances to practice the art of dying this is number 3 what a trash to annihilate each decade now this is her third suicide attempt and we know that it was death she was referring to as it in the first few lines of the poem but it is futile to waste each decade waiting for self destruction and instead of that what gets annihilated or destroyed is the decade the time and not her what a million filaments the peanut crunching crowd shoves in to see them unwrap me hand and foot then again a pause the big strip tees gentlemen ladies these are my hands my knees i may be skin and bone nevertheless i am the same identical woman the first time it happened i was 10 it was an accident the second time i meant to last it out and not come back at all i rocked shut so now she imagines her body to be made up of a million filaments or strings uh, like the crowd and uh, the crowd is not really bothered for whom it is like a um, show that she has died and is now buried and they come to unwrap her body and her body hands knees skin and bones all are visible but all this is a spectacle with no effect to her as she is in this uh, she is the uh, same woman as earlier it implies that even while she was breathing she was dead and had been attempting suicides so now when she comes back from the grave she is the exact same woman unchanged she manages to do it again even after actually dying then she details the times when she tried committing suicide and the first was at the age of 10 years which is a very tender age but she adds that it was an accident and not intentional the second time she did it on purpose and curled into herself as a seashell and determined uh, to block all air and life out but she was saved again these lines seem to be autobiographical for as sylvia plath 
uh, notes in her autobiographical novel the bell jar she once took sleeping pills and curled up into a small place to die so it's as if a show of the cops is going on and uh, she has she has been placed for spectacle for people to you know keep munching peanuts and come and enjoy the show her body has become a joke her um, phys- physical body and even her her psychological state is also becoming a joke for everyone a laughing point as if she is not a real individual now some people determined to rescue her come into the picture and save her picking worms off her body as if they are piling up pearls um i rocked shut as a sea shell they had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls dying is an art like everything else i do it exceptionally well i do it so it feels like hell i do it so it feels real i guess you could say i have a call it's easy enough to do it in a cell it's easy enough to do it and stay put it's the theatrical comeback in broad day to the same place the same face the same brute amused shout a miracle that knocks me out there is a charge so now some people determined to rescue her come into the picture and save her picking worms off her body as if they are picking up pearls they might be literal worms or imaginary too but the images of the seashell from the previous stanza is continued then uh, appear perhaps the most significant lines in the poem dying is an art dying is not the same uh, dull depressing chilling activity as people call it to be she has reached that dangerous level of indifference because um, to her dying is but an art like all other arts human beings have perfected many arts and dying is just one of them and she is a master at it the poem is getting too intense confident in tone and rhythmical she commits um these societal attempts at dying because they make her experience hell and those are the only moments which seem real or feel like real life to her when she has to struggle for breath um uh, it is it, it may be a gruesome image but this reveals her psychological state at this point the kind of ease she has to talk about it is such in such a common place manner is very terrifying and then she says it's like a theatrical comeback like the resurrection of biblical lazarus and like an act done for the stage it is all performance and she is both the di- director and as well as an actor on the stage so she wields control of the scene now in this twisted scene of her mind the same uncaring brute people are thrilled to see her performance and call it a miracle but she is set off by this she claims that there is a charge for her performance of her art there is a charge for the eyeing of my scars there is a charge for the hearing of my heart and then a big gap it really goes and there is a charge a very large charge for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of my hair or my clothes so so hair doctor so hair enemy so now again the nazi references she claims that there is a charge to see her internal scars to witness her pain hearing her heartbeat or to talk or touch her one has to pay a price what price that is we do not know yet but the image gets even more malformed when she states that for the right charge the people may also take her blood or her hair or her clothes in other words this shows her severely sickened state where she feels objectified to such a great extent that she has become accustomed to it to a horrifying degree but underneath all of this is a cry for being left alone and urge to leave her to die her very words evoke her agony so you have to uh, imagine how plainly how simply and how without uh, any emotion she is uh, talking in this poem she she takes these big gaps big pauses in the poem to think about whatever uh, is going on in her mind the chaos goes on in her mind we, we never really see it in the poem all she presents to her are the composed and very calm thoughts that she has very very matter of fact uh, way of talking and she is very casual about it throughout the poem she does not uh, feel show her depression like in, 
like in a manner of wailing or you know showing her depression as if she is so sad that uh, she is losing life she is she has become accustomed to it and she really what she really wants is for the reader to understand that her life state her psychological state is such that she wants to give up on life now again the nazi images return with her claiming that her doctors are nazis who are just extending her suffering by saving her repeatedly only to experience painful act of dying once again she refers to her doctor as d o k t o r doctor here doctor here is a german word for mister and then she addresses the enemy as her this is a reference to the nazi atrocities on the helpless jewish people the doctors performing fatal experiments on them uh, them not being considered human beings uh, they are being placed in gas chambers to uh, choke to death and burnt alive and such she imagines herself to be in a similar kind of suffocation so she is suffering in life and wishes to die but the doctors keep on saving her probably as they don't wish her to enjoy her agony she is pretty valuable like gold for them as she says i am your opus i am your valuable the pure gold baby that melts to a shriek i turn and burn you know references to turning and burning of jewish people in the gas chambers do not think i underestimate your great concern ash ash then again a small gap you poke and stir flesh bone there is nothing there and then again a great pause a cake of soap a wedding ring a gold filling these are all objects that are said uh, to be made from the skins of the jewish people who were killed in that manner by the nazis so she is pretty valuable like gold for them and just like jews turned and shrieked and were burned to death she too is a victim of a different sort of mental trauma but she does not underestimate their concern for her which is an irony because all she really wants is to die and they must let her to it in peace now she imagines that in her third and hopefully the last attempt at death her physical body has been turned to ash completely in a concentration camp chamber now that she has died there are only some paltry possessions left behind a gold filling a wedding ring a cake of soap which is a reference to the nazi activity of turning the remains of the gas chambers into soaps this is a revolting yet engaging image now the poem suddenly changes in tone for much of the poem she remained an object of display she remained victim but now after death she has gained a defying freedom and the power over her doctors who are presumably men and thus the lines move towards a gender argument where male domination of women is challenged and even beaten down here god here lucifer beware beware out of the ash i rise with my red hair and i eat men like air so she refers to her doctors as both god and lucifer good and evil and finally at the very end of the poem she rises again but this time like the bird phoenix in classical mythology uh, a bird that burnt itself and rose from its ashes with renewed youth nevertheless the idea of rebirth is reintroduced as she is again rising after being cruelly burnt to death by the nazis she rises without anyone's help like lazarus needed the help of jesus but she does not she is much like the phoenix bird she has all power over men who have been thoroughly unfair to her in her previous life and she vows to eat them like air that is they are too easy for her to consume now that she has become powerful that she has you know over overgrown death so to say so the dynamics of domination have been overturned thus opens up a scope for feminist reading of the poem too so in a nutshell what you find in the poem is a deeply depressed and almost oppressively choked character who has nothing left to see life as bright and happy according to plath herself a person out of the nazi concentration camp would never want for people to console him or her that everything would be okay that life would be dignified again because the horrors that they have gone through only they can feel them only they can sympathize with it similarly uh, through this poem lady lazarus asserts her right to be comparable to the victims of the holocaust on a psychological level as she too is trapped in a never ending cycle of torment and pain and there is no ray of hope for her except the relieving hand of death yet by the end of the poem the concept of typical male dominance is attacked uh, and she becomes a merciless destroyer of men 
who have been dominating women like objects of display for centuries so therefore death depression and the altering dynamics of power are the central themes of the poem there are a lot of emotions like anger pain resentment grief etc most of all she regrets is the lack of an empathetic heart she has been just an object of ridicule or entertainment and so she rises one final time to avenge herself so these are the basic concerns of the poem thank you thank you very much uh, dear students for participating in this short session inshallah there will be two other explanations on the topic of this poem uh, very soon see you soon inshallah in the next session till then it is allah is and goodbye thank you very much again